what is what is the SI unit of force? The SI unit of force is Newton. The second one is force a scalar or a vector quantity. Here force is a vector quantity because it has got magnitude and direction. That's why it becomes a vector quantity. Next, are reaction and action balanced forces? No, they are not balanced forces because they are equal and opposite, but they act on different bodies. And because they act on different bodies, they do not become balanced forces. They may be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. But they are not balance forces. To explain this further, here suppose you have a wall and there is this person who is pushing the wall. So this would be the action, he's pushing the wall. The action is on the wall and the wall pushes him back. The reaction, this is the reaction, but the reaction is now acting on the person. The action is on the wall, however the reaction is on the man or on the person. So they act on different bodies and hence they are not balanced forces. They do not cancel each other. How are action and reaction related in magnitude and direction? So when it comes to magnitude, they are equal in magnitude. And uh, when it comes to direction, they are opposite in direction. Next, define momentum and give its SI unit. Now, momentum is said to be a product of mass and velocity. And that's the reason why momentum P we write as mass into velocity. Now, to give its SI unit, the SI unit of mass we know is kg and velocity is meter per second. So, unit of momentum is kg meter per second. It can also be written as kg meter second raised to minus 1. Now, is it a scalar or vector quantity? Momentum is a vector quantity. It has direction as well as magnitude. Which physical quantity corresponds to rate of change of momentum and its force? This is given by Newton's second law. So Newton's second law says that rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to force. So remember rate of change of momentum is force. On which factor does inertia depend? Inertia depends on the mass of the body. Small, small mass, less inertia. And uh, greater mass, you'll have more inertia. So larger bodies will have more inertia. The eighth question. Masses of two objects are 2 kgs and 20 kgs. Which has greater inertia? Now the one that has got greater mass will have more inertia. So 20 kgs, 20 kgs body, Mass is more, hence inertia is more.
The ninth question. What is the momentum of a 5 kg's ball kept at rest? Now we know momentum is mass into velocity. Here it is 5, but it is at rest. And because it is at rest, the velocity is 0. So this is 0. So momentum of this object is 0 kg meter per second. So every object that is at rest will have 0 momentum. For the 10th question, can a balance force stop a moving body? No, balance force cannot stop a moving body. Balanced force cannot stop a moving body. Balance force can do only one thing. They can only change the shape. They cannot stop, they cannot push a body. The next, what is the principle of the working of a jet plane? Now, working of the jet plane is Newton's third law of motion. Now, third law of motion means every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Equal and opposite reaction. That is the principle of uh, the jet plane. Next, the twelfth question. In a collision between a lighter and heavier body, which experiences a greater force? Both experience the same force. And this is again given by Newton's third law. So same force. Because here we have seen that action is equal to reaction in magnitude. The magnitude of action equal to magnitude of a reaction. So both experience the same force. What is the total momentum of a bullet and a gun before firing? Now we know before firing they are at rest. And because they are at rest, their velocity of both is equal to zero. So the momentum before firing will be mass into velocity. And since the velocity mass is fine, the velocity is zero, it will be 0 kg meter per second. A balance force acts on a moving body with velocity 5 meter per second. Will there be acceleration? Now remember balance force cannot bring about acceleration. This is a balance force. There will be no acceleration. No change in velocity. Only unbalanced force can bring about acceleration. So, balance force, no acceleration. Fifteenth one. Do action and reaction produce the same magnitude in, uh, of acceleration? No. If you have a larger body, larger mass, there will be less acceleration. And uh, if the body is small, small mass, greater acceleration. Mass of a body is doubled. What happens to its acceleration under a given force? So here the mass is doubled. So if it is m, now the mass becomes 2m because it is doubled. The force remains the same. So f and f. Let us see what happens to acceleration. So this is a1, acceleration in the first case, a2, acceleration in the second case. By Newton's second law, we know f equal to mass into acceleration. Here also force is the same, equal to mass 
into acceleration. Let's divide this f equal to m a1 over f equal to 2m a2. We'll divide both these equations. We cancel, you get 1 equal to m, m cancels a1 over 2a2. So we cross multiply, we get 2a2 equal to a1. So a2 becomes 1 by 2 of a1. So the acceleration becomes half. Is half. If the mass is double, the acceleration is half. Name the unbalanced force that stops a moving body. And that is force of friction. It stops a moving body. 18th one, define 1 Newton. Now to define 1 Newton, we do F equal to M into A. And we see when mass is 1 kg and acceleration is 1 meter per second square, you get 1 equal, you get F equal to 1 into 1. So F equal to 1 Newton. So 1 Newton is a force. 1 Newton is a force that produces acceleration of 1 meter per second square in 1 kg body. For the 19th, what type of force does not produce motion but produces change in shape? And that is balance force. Balance forces only produce change in shape, not motion. Why does a bicycle come to rest after we stop pedaling? And this is because of force of friction. The force of friction x in the opposite direction. Or the force of friction opposes motion. And when you stop pedaling, the forward force stops. Hence the force of friction then stops the motion. It opposes the motion. For the 21st, on what factor does momentum of a body depends? It depends on two factors, mass of the body and velocity. Because we know momentum is mass into velocity. A plastic ball and a clay ball of equal masses traveling in the same direction with equal speed to strike against a vertical wall from which ball the wall receives a greater momentum now remember both these balls have equal mass and equal velocity so if the mass and velocity is same they will have equal momentum So the momentum will be equal. State the relationship between momentum and the force acting. So we know force is directly proportional to rate of change in momentum. If the mass of the body and the force acting on it is double, what happens to acceleration? So here the mass is double, which means if it is m, now it becomes 2m. And the force also is double. So f becomes now 2f because the force is double. What happens to acceleration? So we have a1 and this is a2. By Newton's uh, second law, we got f equal to here mass into acceleration. Here to f, which is now 2f equal to mass is 2m, acceleration is a2. Now you divide both these equations. So you have f equal to m a1 equal divide by 2f equal to 2m a2. 
you cancel this out, you cancel this out and this 2 and 2 also will cancel so you'll have now 1 equal to A1 over A2 and A1 becomes equal to A2 so the acceleration does not change you could do the sum in another way you know that 2F equal to 2M into A2 so F equal to 2M a2 over 2 this cancels so you get F equal to M A2 acceleration remains the same name the unbalanced force which slows down a moving bicycle we have done this before and that is the force of friction The 30th sum, a body of mass 2 kgs is at rest. So here mass equal to 2 kg and it is at rest. That means U equal to 0 meter per second. What will be the magnitude of the force which will make the body move with a speed of 30 meter per second? So final velocity 30 meter per second at the end of 2 seconds. So time equal to 2 seconds. To find the force we first need to know the acceleration. So we know the formula of acceleration is V minus U over T. So V is 30 minus 0 over 2. So we have acceleration is 15 meter per second square. Now for force F equal to M into A. So mass is 2, acceleration is 15. So the first force here is 30 Newtons. State one application of first law, second law and third law. So for the first law application we see that carpet, when we hit the carpet, the dust falls out. The dust falls out out. For the second law, the example of a player, the player lowers his hands while catching the ball. And for the third law, you can say the recoil of a gun when a bullet is fired. This is application of the third law. Using a horizontal force of 5000 newtons, a bulldozer moves the earth with a uniform velocity of 2 meter per second. What is the force of friction? Now if the bulldozer is, is moved, that means the force of friction is less than 5000 newtons. That is why it is moved in the forward direction. So the force of friction you can say is a little less than 5000 Newton that is why it's able to move forward in the study third there are two cases this is case one we will take this case one so in this case one we need to find the net force and acceleration Now if you notice here there are there is 20 newtons in one direction while in the opposite direction there is 10 newtons plus another 10 newtons which means the forward force is 20 newtons and this opposite force is also 20 newtons so the net force will be zero and if net force is zero acceleration will also be zero there will be no acceleration uh, in this uh, body. Now in the second sum here look at it carefully that is 35 newtons in this on this side and on this side there is 15 newtons and 25 newtons which means 35 newtons 15 plus 25 is uh, 40 newtons on this side and 30 new, 35 newtons on this side. So net force, if we take this as positive, 
we need to take this as negative because it is in the opposite direction. So it will be uh, plus 40 minus 35 and that will be plus 5 newtons. So the net force is 5 newtons and if you look up here the acceleration, uh, the mass is the mass of the body is 5 kgs. So we can go ahead and find the acceleration doing F equal to M into A. So 5 mass is 5, acceleration, acceleration will be 1 meter per second square. Now here too we have two forces, here 1 F2 in this direction. So F2 200 newtons and then you have F1 in the opposite direction. That is 30 newtons. This is not 200, this is 20 newtons. So if we take this force as positive, this would be negative. So because they are in the opposite direction, so net force equal to plus 30 minus 20, which is plus 10 newtons. So this is the net force. What is the direction of the net force? Now the direction of the net force will definitely be direction of net force will be in the positive, it is positive so it will be in this direction, in the direction of the 30 newtons. You remember we took 30 newtons as positive so it will be towards the left in direction of 30. Of the 30 Newton force. If the mass of the body is 10 kgs, what will be its acceleration? So mass is 10 kg. We have to find its acceleration. We know the force is here. Net force we have to take is 10 is 10 newtons. So F equal to m into a. So 10 equal to 10 into a. A equal to 10 over 10, so acceleration is 1 meter per second square. A car of mass 1800 kg, so mass which we write as M, 1800 kg, is moving with a speed of 10 meter per second, so initial velocity is 10 meter per second is brought to rest. Rest means V equal to 0 meter per second. Covering a distance of 50 meter. So distance S is 50 meter. Calculate the force. First we, first we need to know the acceleration. To know the acceleration we have to use the equations of motion. So V equal to U plus AT. Now we can't use this because we do not know the time. Then we have another equation S equal equal to ut plus half at square. This too we cannot use because we do not know the time. So the last equation is v square equal to u square plus 2as. So we go ahead and use this equation and find the acceleration. So v we know is 0, u is 10 square, 2a, a we do not know, s is 50. So 0 equal to this is 100 and this is 10, uh, 100 A. So we take minus 100 equal to 100 A. So A equal to minus 100 over 100. So A equal to minus 1 meter per second square. Now we will find the force by Newton's second law, F equal to M into A. The mass is 1800, acceleration is minus 1. So force is minus 1800 Newtons. The negative sign indicates it's a retarding force. The force is opposite to the motion. How can the second law be used to measure force? Now by the second law, we get F equal to M into A, where F is a force. So we can find the force if we know the mass. Mass is M. 
and the acceleration is A. So if we find the mass and the acceleration, and acceleration we know is initial velocity, final velocity over time. So if we know mass and uh, acceleration, we can find the force. So second law is used to measure force. Why is the recoil of a heavy gun on firing not so strong as a light gun using the same cartridge? The first thing we will see, why does a gun recoil? That is explained by third law. So when we fire a bullet, firing of a bullet, when a bullet is fired, there is a forward force and that is action. By Newton's third law, to this forward force, there will be a backward force, backward or a force in the backward direction and this is the reaction. For every action there is a reaction. This is the action force, the forward force is the action and the backward force is the reaction. Now if you have a heavy gun, now here is a picture of a heavy gun and a, and a smaller gun. Now the backward force is the same but this mass is large and this mass is small. So the heavy gun has more mass more mass and because it has more mass its acceleration will be less and acceleration with less means there will be less recoil but for the light gun we have uh, less mass hence more acceleration so the light gun will recoil much more do action and reaction cancel each other? Justify. They do not cancel each other because they are not balanced forces. They do not act on the same body. For the next sum. For mass of 2 kgs, the VT graph is given. Find the force experienced along OA. Now this is OA. For OA, the initial velocity is 0 meter per second. And we will take this as 10 here. The final velocity is 10 meter per second. And the time here is 10 seconds, from 0 to 10, so 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. So we find the acceleration. Now to calculate the acceleration is V minus U over T. So the acceleration, you have 10 minus 0 over T. So acceleration and the T we know is in this case is 10. So it will be 1 meter per second square. Now force equal to M into A which is 2 into 1, so first force is 2 newtons. Now along AB, now along AB, if we take AB, we see there is no acceleration, the velocity is remaining same. The initial velocity is 10 meter per second and the final is also 10 meter per second and the time here is 20 seconds. So this is AB, along AB. So the acceleration V minus U over T, 10 minus 10 over 20 and it is 0. Now the force will be mass into acceleration which is 2 into 0, 0. So force is 0 newtons. So along AB the force is 0 newtons. Now let's find out what is along BC. Yeah, this is BC. So for BC, where is this up? For BC, you have U equal to 10 meter per second. This is U, 10 meter per second. And the final uh, velocity V is 0 meter per second. So V here is 0 meter per second. The time, we take this as 40, the time is 10. 
seconds. So acceleration V minus U over T that is 10 minus 10 over 10 which is here uh, 0. Okay, this is not right one minute. So we do the V is 0 minus 10 over 10. Acceleration will be minus 1 meter per second square. So F equal to m into a 2 into minus 1 that is minus 2 newtons will be the force along bc